Starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon uh, for those of you who are on the East Coast, and good morning to those of you um, who are on the West Coast. My name is Becky Robinson, and I'm here today with Chip Bell, and it is so fun um, to have this launch uh, webinar in celebration of Chip's latest book. Um, as we're getting started, just a few housekeeping items. We will do some Q&A at the end, and so if you can quickly find and locate your question panel, and uh, give, give me a shout. Um, my friend Chantel from Ottawa has already told us that she would not miss a webinar with Chip, and I wouldn't either because I'll be muting myself when he presents, but I know that all of you in your homes or offices will be laughing along with me because any webinar with Chip is bound to be fun. Chip, how's it going? Oh, fantastic, fantastic, and I'm wearing my Sprinkles watch that Weaving Influence gave me. <laughs> it gives I, me inspiration. Uh, I love that. That is so fun. Um, hi, Joseph. Thanks for joining. Um, how about if those of you who are on the call, tell me what kind of customers you work with in your job. One of the things that Chip and I talked about preparing for this webinar is whether or not you have a, a true customer service job with facing customers in a, in, a, in a business environment. Everybody has customers they serve. So uh, maybe use the question panel to tell me um, about the, quest the customers that you serve. Um, yeah, that would be fun. I would love to hear from you. Also, tell us where you're calling in from. We always like to know um, where you are, whether that's uh, in your work or uh, your geographical location. So would love to, would love to hear where you're where you're from. We have um, Ruth is here from France and her customers are travel providers. Thanks for sharing that Ruth. So while you're sharing that with me and I'll loop back to your answers in a minute, a couple of housekeeping things. We would love to have you share your thoughts via Twitter today um, and we're using the hashtag sprinkles or if you want to join what's trending on Twitter you could use the hashtag sprinkles are for winners and chips hash uh, Chip's Twitter handle is Chip R. Bell, um, so we would love to have you share that. Uh, we've indicated the hashtag um, there in your chat window, um, Sprinkles and Chip R. Bell. Um, Rose is here from Detroit, not so far from me, and uh, she works with customers who are ministry and nonprofit managers. We have some friends in Texas. Boy, a lot of people in Michigan with me. Um, thanks to all of you. Um, uh, Janelle from South Dakota says that her customer is her employee, um, all the employees who work, work with her. So thanks to all of you, and we look forward to more interaction. I'm going to turn it over to Chip in just a minute because he has some great content to share with us. But before I do, I want to introduce my friend Chip Bell. Uh, my team and I have been so thrilled to partner with Chip since 2013, and this is the third book that we're launching with Chip. Um, this new book, I'm going to give you a quick glimpse for those of you who have not yet gotten one is Sprinkles. It's a beautiful book and the content is tremendous. Um, this is Chip's 20-something. Chip, how many books have you written? 22? Uh, yeah, I've written more than I've read. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, Chip makes his home in Lake Oconee, Florida, uh, not Florida, excuse me, Georgia, where it happens to be warm, and I don't want to tell you how warm because it's freezing here. Uh, Chip's been married for many, many years to his wife, Nancy, and Chip is speaking around the country at more events than you can imagine. I can't even keep up with his schedule. So, Chip, I'm so thrilled to have you with us today. Well, thank you. It's exciting for me to be here, and it's exciting to talk about this new book. It uh, has been a uh, a labor of love, and I'm, I'm thrilled that it is finally uh, launched today uh, up on Amazon, or your favorite uh, bookseller. Um, hope you'll find it at uh, great places like uh, Books A Million or wherever you order great books. Um, but I want to start here and ask you uh, a fun question, and that is, how much is one cup of coffee really worth? Uh, let's think about it. One cup of coffee. Let's start with... Uh, if you brewed a pot of a great coffee in your kitchen, how much, how much do you think one cup would be worth? Um, actually, it's about eight cents. Now, let's shift and you go to McDonald's, right? Uh, now, how much is it worth? Uh, probably a dollar, but the good news is you get to keep the cup, right? Uh, and then we go to Starbucks, and we all know Starbucks runs, depending on where you are, about four bucks uh, a cup. Now, how about the, a cup of coffee? at the Palm Court at the beautiful Plaza Hotel in New York City. Think about that. $10. Would you pay $10 for a cup of coffee? <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, Valentine's fell on a weekend. 
And I took my wife to New York. We stayed at the beautiful Plaza Hotel, and we got up Saturday morning, had breakfast in the Palm Court, and she got up to go to the bathroom, and as soon as she did, the maitre d' came over and asked me, what's your wife's favorite song? And I told him, and when she came back and they poured that first cup of coffee, two violinists came over and played her favorite song. Uh, and uh, it was phenomenal. And then Sunday morning we got up, and they'd already slid the receipt under my door, and I looked at it, $10 for that cup of coffee. Do you think I got my money's worth? You bet I did. I got a lot of extra kisses that weekend. So we've gone from eight cents to ten dollars when we're talking about a cup of coffee. So what is made the difference? And obviously the difference is it's all about the experience. And that's what we're going to focus on. How do we create that special sprinkles experience? Because experience today has tremendous value uh, to the customer. So I, and you think about it, what, what, is the, what is the worth, what is the economic worth of a great customer experience? Well, let me give you one way to think about that. Uh, one is, let's say you invested 10 years ago $100 uh, in uh, the S&P 500, and at the same time, you invested $100 in the top 25% companies on the ACSI, that's the American Customer Satisfaction Index, companies like you see uh, on the screen. So 10 years later, how much would your investment be worth? Well, the $100 you put in the S&P today would be worth about $134, but the money you put in the top quarter of the ACSI that ranks the best service providing companies in the, in the country would be worth $662, five times the worth. So we know we can measure it a lot of different ways. There's a lot of great return, a great economic worth uh, in the customer experience. Customers have changed, and one thing that's changed customers is the fact that they now are accustomed to being highly stimulated and entertained. Uh, you walk in a store and it's like data overload. It's like stimulating. It's, it's ex extremely uh, beautiful, colorful. Uh, watch TV and you've got all kinds of stuff on the screen, stuff crawling across the bottom of the screen. Uh, we live in, uh, in that kind of world. You know, it's, it wasn't that long ago that uh, entrepreneur uh, Candace Nelson launched the first cupcake ATM, and, and, and it's been an incredibly big success, but I think it's more than a successful venture. It is a metaphor for today's customer, because at her ATM, you can get cupcakes 24-7. Customers like it that way. You get a great cupcakes, very good. Uh, you can also get it delivered in 10 seconds, and you can get it personalized. You can get it with sprinkles. To me, it is sort of a metaphor of today's customer. So where did I get the concept of sprinkles? Well, actually, I got it from my granddaughters. Who we, we love making cupcakes and cookies. And I had one, uh, one they were here and said, uh, uh, they call me Chippy. You know, Chippy, what makes a good cupcake special? I said, no, what? Sprinkles. It is all about how we add that unique experience uh, that makes that customer uh, thrilled, enamored, and takes their breath away. So what is it? What would be some of the features of service with sprinkles? Well, I think, first of all, it needs to be unexpected, unexpected. My wife has a new car, traded her old car and got a new car, and a week after she had her new car, she turned on the radio for the first time and discovered they had programmed in her radio stations from her trade-in. What do you think she talks about? The car or the radio? She talks about the radio, and Lord, I think what she paid for that car. So here again, it needs to be a surprise. It needs to be unexpected. It also needs to be simple. I was uh, working at a hotel in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, the park inn, and I had breakfast, and I got finished with my breakfast. Sandy had given me a great experience and a great breakfast, and I got up to, to leave, and she brought me my check. And with it, she brought me a go cup of coffee, complimentary. And I thought, oh, you have no clue how much this means to me, how much I needed this go cup. And then she sprinkled the experience, and she said, it is our gift to you. That's, that's an example of something made simple. It needs to be simple. You know, customers don't want you to roll out, you know, carpet, red carpet and champagne and helicopters. It needs to be simple. And the most creative things usually are. And finally, it needs to fit. It needs to be appropriate. You know, the Ritz-Carlton Hotel at, the, at their property in Orlando has a, a steps that you see here in the slide, slide that children can check in along with their parents. 
Now, why this particular property? Obviously, Disney World, right nearby. And so again, it needs to fit, it needs to be appropriate. But the challenge we face, I think, with serving with sprinkles is the way our minds work. You know, we are all about looking for patterns. We love patterns, and patterns help us in a lot of different ways. But you look at this slide right here, and, and look how fast you can read that slide. Because what your brain did, it looked for a pattern. It looked for a pattern, so it immediately saw all of these and found the pattern and made it easy. In fact, you could read that quickly. Now again, there's a great advantage to patterns. It gives us language, it gives us a warning, all kinds of good things. But at the end, it also, one of the, one of the ways that it patterns us out of innovative service is we fall back on the way we've always done things. We've always done it this way. And so again, part of the goal and part of what Sprinkles is all about is how do I break those patterns? How do I see it differently? How do I avoid falling into the old way we've always done things? Let me give you a fun example. So I'll give you a few seconds and count every square you see. So look at the screen and count every square you see. I'll wait. I'll wait. But I won't wait too long. So if you look at this and say, uh, if you go one square high, one square wide, there are 16. We, we, all, we all see that one, don't we? Uh, if you go two squares high, two squares wide, there's nine. Okay? There's that one. You can see that one pretty easy as a, a two by two, and there's that one. And so there's all nine of those two by two squares. If you go three squares high, three squares wide, there's four. Right? There's that one. There's that one. There's that one. There's that one. And if you go four squares high, four squares wide, there's one. We see the whole. Okay? Well, this is a pattern. And so your mind immediately went to the pattern. And some of you have seen this go, oh, I know there's 30. But there are actually more. And I want to show you the next one. And your mind won't like the next one I show you because it breaks the pattern. So there's that one. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, no, no. That, that. But that's the point. And once you see that one, now you can see the screen. Now you can see the other squares in the room. Because the question says, count every square you see. So again, part of what we're going to look at is a way to begin to think about six different strategies, six different ways to overcome the natural patterns our mind follows. We're going to look at surprise, 4D, partnering, mentoring, effortless, and generosity. All patterned and all characterized in the book. But I want to start with our question of the day. That is, what's a product or service you love so much that if they raise their price 50%, you'd still be a loyal fan? Well, for me, it's Jack Daniels. I love Jack Daniels. Um, I don't like Jack Daniels. I love Jack Daniels. Um, now, I'm not a big drinker. I only drink on the weekends and during the week. But if I go to a, a party where they're serving adult beverages and they uh, don't have Jack Daniels, I usually get a glass of club soda. Now, I always love Jack Daniels, but something changed. They didn't change the price or the bottle or the crazy ad campaign or the price. They changed the experience. I had a friend of mine who said, I'm going to recommend you to be a member of the Tennessee Squire Association. I said, what's that? He said, oh, you'll find out. Turns out it's kind of a fan club for Jack Daniels Whiskey. And shortly thereafter, I got in the mail a certificate saying I now was a member of the Tennessee Squire Association. And it came with a deed saying I... I now own part of the Jack Daniels Distillery in Lynchburg, Tennessee. I'm in Texas at the time. I thought, if this is one clever marketing trick, if I own anything, it's probably the size of a postage stamp. And then I got a K-1 to attach to my income tax saying I had flood damage on my property of 26 cents. But then things really started happening. Now think about your organization. They'd send me stuff every now and then. Nothing big, a calendar, a coaster. You know, they, they uh, told me about uh, their uh, website there where you could call Snack with Jack, where I could find out about tailgate parties at major athletic events. And they asked, my, asked my, me to write my congressman to influence a piece of legislation they were interested in. I didn't do it, but I thought that's kind of nice. They asked me like a, a partner. I think I was a part of the taste test for Gentleman Jack. Because when they uh, first came out with it, where I buy Jack Dan, which gave me a taste and wrote down what I said. 
I could go on and on. I started getting letters from my neighbors in Lynchburg because they lost their dog and thought it was on my property or, you know, somebody was uh, trying to raise black Angus cows and several loot calves are showing up with white faces and they spotted a bull on my plot. And every time I got these letters, I opened it like a check from the IRS. What are they doing? They're sprinkling my experience. You know, so think about it. How do we create that? And I want to use Jack Daniels because I think they are sort of a fun example to how we can sprinkle our customer and create that value unique, not just a value added kind of experience. So let's look at our first, our first uh, strategy for how we overcome mind patterns. And it starts with surprise. You know, my wife uh, knows I like everything going with sprinkles. Everything goes with sprinkles. That's one of the chapters in the book. Everything goes with sprinkles. Let me show you. She gave me a Jack Daniels uh, cookbook. I, I'm a big fan of barbecue, and this is a really unique uh, barbecue cookbook. And I got it, and you can imagine my surprise when I open it up, because you don't find these very often. They had a wonderful recipe for roast possum. And that's not something you can find in most cookbooks. And it didn't stop there, because they also had a recipe for barbecued rabbit, and this is real special, uh, chicken fried, fried beaver. Now, the fact that they had fun with this and added something into this, and I grew up in the deep south where, eat, where we'd eat stuff like this, but the point is they thought about what can we do to this cookbook to make it out of the ordinary. So again, look for ways to how we deliver that kind of unique experience. You know, this is, this is Matt, uh, where I buy my Jack Daniels. That's me buying that little mini, mini bottle and, uh, at Oconee Cellar, here at Lake Oconee where, where I live. Uh, well, Matt sent me a birthday card. He sent me a birthday card. Now, how do you know my birthday? Well, obviously, it's real easy for him, right? He checks my ID every time I go in there. He knows exactly what my address is and what my birthday is, so he sent me a birthday card. And he didn't just send me a birthday card. It included a coupon to give me 10% off. Off of what? Off a of jack. Daniels. Here again, looking for ways to say, how do I make this experience unique? How do I do something that sort of creates this take their breath away experience for this customer? So again, what can we do to create that element of surprise? But I'm going to move now to our next strategy of how we overcome the mind patterns and see service in a very different way. And it, I call it 4D. 4D. It's putting a cherry on top of great service. And, and I, 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 I'll start with my Jack Daniels example. You can log on jackdaniels.com. I like mine on the rocks. And you can click on that little thing up in the top right hand corner. And you can actually hear them pour in your Jack Daniels. Now I know what you're thinking. This boy has a problem. He is listening to Jack Daniels. But think about how fun that is. And think about what can we do to stimulate the senses in a unique and special way. Because that's really what 4D is about. You know, I, I, I call it 4D it, it, because I think about my granddaughters. You know, my granddaughters, um, my wife and I bought a, Ford, a 3D TV for our living room. And we thought, this this 3D TV, they'll want to come see us a lot. And uh, it, it's a beautiful, big, widescreen 3D TV. Of course, you got the glasses. And we ordered all the movies. You know, we ordered Frozen and Toy Story 3 and, and uh, Hugo and every 3D movie we could think of that they might like to look at. And, uh, oh, they loved it. Uh, they loved it. They watched it. Yeah, you know, all these movies, the images that come out in the living room, and they just squeal. And then they went to Disney World, and they got 40. And not only did the images come out in the theater, but the seat shook, and the you know, it misted with w w rain and water, and it, the wind blew, and they walked out of that theater, and they said, Chippy? When are we going to get a 4D TV? Well, think about it. I think customers are a lot like that. 
they like you to find ways to say, how can I stimulate more of the senses? Look for ways to say, uh, how can I think about this? You know, you, you walk into a Western hotel, and if you don't pay attention, you'll notice the, the, the aroma uh, shifts from something, the smell of the street, to something completely unique and different when you get into the lobby. It actually is called white tea. It's a special uh, aroma that they had created that is through, uh, they have machines in the lobby that generate this smell. And then you get to, to your room and they're in there as well. Um, they're also the soap. They're also in the bathrobe. They're in the spa. They're in everything there. And so it permeates all of things. So you remember when you smell white tea, you remember uh, this is the Weston. It's looking for the unique things out of the ordinary. And let me give you a, a fun example. And this is something as simple as a taxi cab. A taxi cab in Charlotte, North Carolina, that decided to have fun with the experience in a way that added to the senses. Let's take a look at Billy Karaoke Cab. Billy Rivera has duct taped a computer monitor to the back of his taxi's headrest. Sweet child of mine! So everyone can sing along. Oh, I wanna dance with somebody in the club who can stroke out and make my own little thing. I love rock and roll! You know what we said? I did these girls! I If you're already happy, Billy's Karaoke Cab is for you. If you're down and out, call Billy anyway. They're always depressed, and I get them put a big smile on their face at the end of the night. Billy! Yeah, Billy! Billy Rivera moved to Charlotte from New York City in the 1980s just to raise his family. Yes, I know every inch of the city, so I'm, I'm content, I'm happy. Twenty years driving a cab. Billy did whatever it took. The necessity to make money and keep um, the entertaining keep my art of just singing, just enjoy singing. But putting karaoke in his cab two years ago was a stroke of genius. He's become so popular, he rarely has to take fares from dispatch. Karaoke cab. People call his cell phone directly. It's a great time. Yeah. You don't ever want to get out of the cab. <laughs> Now think about that. Even people will keep, keep asking to keep driving around the block so they can finish the song. Taking a simple thing like adding music to the experience. Let me give you my favorite example, and that's a Hotel Monaco. And I was so uh, thrilled that the uh, uh, CEO of Kempton Hotels, which owns the Hotel Monaco, wrote an endorsement. But it, this is a great example, and, and how they have set themselves apart by being different than the typical business traveler hotel. For example, you know, you think about uh, turndown service. What, what, what do you get on your pillow? At most hotels, you get the proverbial chocolate. Not at the Hotel Monaco. You never know what you're going to get. You know, I've gotten a flower, a foreign coin, a yo-yo, a gazoo, a bag of popcorn, a lottery ticket. Look for ways to make it different. How about that bathrobe? Always the white bathrobe, but not at the Hotel Monaco. It's leopard and zebra print, and they have a yoga mat. Most hotels look like this. Most rooms at the Hotel Monaco look like this, but this is my favorite. Most hotels will have a policy like this, but at the Hotel Monaco, you walk up to check in. They'll ask you, did you bring a pet? I know. Would you like a pet? They are very pet friendly. And if you'd like, they can arrange to put a goldfish in your room. All they ask is that you give it a name. So I named mine Trixie. And there's Trixie. I took a picture of Trixie. They got a little name plate for Trixie. Uh, and so the next time I checked into the Hotel Monaco, the front desk person leaned over and said, would you like Trixie to come up and spend the night with you again? Now think about how fun that is, how easy that is, how simple that is. The housekeepers take care of them, the customer doesn't have to take care of them, but they thought about what can we do in the experience that we have to make it enchanting, to make it different, to make it out of the ordinary. And that's the whole concept of looking at it through a, a different set of lens to say, 
What could I do? It's the antique store that decides to have people dressed in tuxedos. How cool is that? It's the, it's the seafood restaurant in South Carolina on the beaches that makes sure their toothpicks are salty, as they should be, right? Or what I, one of my favorites is a, a, a wholesale auto auction that plays uh, dry, fast scenes from famous movies. That's the scene you see here is from, um, from Bullet with Steve McQueen. But they play these all the time, and people, while they're waiting to get their badge to get into the auction, can stand there and watch famous scenes uh, uh, from famous movies about cars. Again, it is looking for how do I create this unique experience, e even, even to the signage we use. Look for, say, what can I do to make this little bit inventive, a little out of the ordinary. This is my favorite. Unattended children will be given an espresso and a free puppy. So again, find ways to look through the senses at the experience you create. But we're going to move now to the next one, and that is how can we use mentoring? You know, I call it giving the greatest thing since sliced bread. You know, I think the second greatest gift you can give another human being is the gift of learning. And so when we provide an opportunity to, for customers to learn, we're giving them a valuable and super important gift, looking for ways to say, how do I hardwire learning into this particular experience? You know. Jack Daniels does a cool thing. You can go on their app website, and they'll actually teach you how to sip good Tennessee whiskey. And what you see on the screen are two steps. You know, drink it with a friend, follow your nose. Actually, there, it's more complicated than you might think. There are actually more steps involved. There are actually 12 steps uh, yep, um, to how to sip good Tennessee whiskey. But I think about it. They thought about that. You want how they make the barrel. You want how they make the whip. Where does the water come from? You know, where does, all of these are added to, their, to the experience of the customer to say, let's look for ways that we can add learning to the customer's experience. Because we know that learning has a large impact on the customer's uh, experience. You know, the research done by my good friend John Goodman found that simply proactively providing new and useful information increase the likelihood of the customers buying from you again. What you see there is average lift to repurchase. Increase that by 32%, just providing that opportunity to grow and learn. What we get is customers love to learn, love to learn, and those organizations that find ways to say, let's help them learn. Let's provide opportunities. Let's be our customer's mentor. You know, many of you may know that the street sweepers at Disney get four days of training. Now, it doesn't take that long to work, learn to work the business end of a broom. But they have learned that the street sweepers get more questions than anybody in the theme park. So when somebody comes up to a street sweeper and says, where's Space Mountain? Or where's the bathroom? Or my little boy wants to know who Snow White's second cousin was on her mama's side or all of those millions and millions of questions they could ask. They don't want them saying, I don't know, go ask her, she's in guest relations. They provide them the training and, the re and resources to be the customer's mentor, to find ways to say, we are here to help you grow and to help you learn. Even finding ways to hardwire learning into the experience can make a huge difference. You know, I remember growing up, you know, in the kitchen, the linoleum floor uh, was what we had in, uh, in the kitchen. And the way you cleaned a linoleum floor was you used uh, some sort of abrasive, you know, Comet, Ajax, something like that. Well, then Armstrong came out with their new no-wax solarium dial, and it was starting to be a dismal failure. And so they thought, what are we going to do? It's not, it's not working. Uh, because what people were accustomed to using, their abrasive, Obviously, a two times over a no, no axillarium time tile, and the shiny's gone forever. So they said, "What can we do?" And 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 my good friend John Goodman was working with them at the time, and he suggested they put a a big sign in the middle of the uh, the floor uh, that said, "To to remove this 800 number, call it," because you know the installer took all instructions and in how to take care of it usually. So the customer will come into their new no wax floor, and they go, what's this 800 number doing in the middle of my floor? 
So they'd call up the 800 number, and the person answering the phone would say, all you got to do to remove that 800 number is to use soap and water. But now I've got you on the phone. Here are several ways to take care of your new no wax solarium tile. And the number of complaints plummeted, the number of sales soared, and it was one of the most successful products Armstrong ever launched, simply by saying there's got to be a way we can hardwire learning uh, into this experience. This is one of my favorites. This is Corley uh, Heating, Air Conditioning, and Electric in Greenville, South Carolina. And I think this is so cool. They will send out an e-bite. This is the one from last week. Uh, it's been a while, but we're finally talking about water heaters. We can all agree that life without w hot water would be a lot less pleasant. So we're giving this often underappreciated appliance its own night. Calvin and Bubba will be answering your questions and letting you know about the upcoming changes to the efficient rating uh, standards on water heaters. And if you've ever never attended before, we host these in the evenings in our shop. Don't worry, you won't get dirty, and you can come after work. We'll have plenty of refreshments, et cetera. Space is limited. Grab your girlfriends and come, and signed by their marketing manager, Katie Sullivan. And you see, P.S., gentlemen, I apologize if you receive this email, but please pass it on uh, to a, a woman. So and again, the point is that they're looking for ways to say, let's have fun and create fun, unique, and unusual ways to help our customers grow find way to help your uh, customers grow. But I want to move to the next one and talk about effortless. Effortless. How do we take effort out of the experience? What we know today is uh, effort is one of the most critical components today of the customer. Effortless. How do we create that state? How do we become as easy as a TV dinner? Look for ways to now, Let me ask you a question. You couldn't beat this. I mean, I was thrilled when I saw this, and I was driving through Tennessee. Now, it doesn't get any easier than that. <laughs> so at any rate, let me ask you a question. If, let's assume for the moment you had an appointment with your physician. You know, not an emergency, but just a regular appointment. So how many of you would be okay with a five-minute wait? Okay. How about, how about a, a ten-minute wait? Uh, how about a fifteen-minute? Now, what I have done is ask many, many audiences this question, and they always answer it the same way, and it looks like this. For everyone, about 15 minutes, it turns dark. Now, if the conventional wisdom is, we'll wait about 15 minutes for our doctor, but that not, then it's going to turn dark, wouldn't we find a way to intervene? Wouldn't we find a way to say, Let's look for a unique way to manage this customer's experience. Manage this experience. So how about this? You know, uh, how, how about the medical center gives you one of those little flashy things and a Starbucks card and lets you go nearby to the Starbucks. This is what happens to my business partner. He goes nearby, and as soon as the doctor's available, because you know sometimes they're caught and get it in surgery, and it's running a little longer than they expect, the little flashy thing goes up. He, he doesn't have to. He can use his Starbucks card free and his laptop and not waste time. Looking for ways to say, what can I do to manage this customer's experience? Just like you enjoy Disney. You know, we know they managed your weight. You know, they, they put signs that says, if you're standing here, the wait time is 20 minutes. Actually, it was more like 18. They underpromised and overdeliver, also known as Mickey Lies. Um, you know, they entertain you in lines. They have all that fast track. They have all kinds of ways to think about what can I do to manage the customer's experience. And we're only looking at one aspect, and that is the wait time. But it's also looking for ways to say, how do I think about the customer before they arrive and afterward? For example, you know, I call this what I learned from customer circus coming to town. When I was growing up, the, the Ringman Brothers, Barnum and Bailey, we were so excited when they'd come to town, but they didn't just show up. There were signs on the telephone poles long before they arrived. And guess what? When they came, they paraded down Main Street. With, we got to see all the lions and tigers and, and, and gorillas and all those things parading down Main Street. So, I mean, by the time the big top was finally raised, they closed schools and closed businesses, everybody came to the circus because they had thought about the customer's experience long before the big time and said, what can we do 
to manage the experience before but also after. What can I do afterward? Because you didn't leave the circus empty-handed. You always left with souvenirs and you played circus on the school playground for days afterward. Think about that from the customer standpoint. And that is, what do I do to manage before? What can I do to anticipate? And what can I do afterward to make sure that memory lasts longer than just experience? You know, my friends at, uh, at Virgin Air have done a great job for a little bit more, a couple hundred dollars more uh, for uh, or flying first class, you know, they'll manage your experience before and after. Lincoln Town Car comes and picks you up, somebody helps you with your luggage, you go to the club, you get to do all kind of eat nice things and play virtual golf and get a mini massage. And Then when you land at your destination, uh, they'll actually have a Lincoln car there to take you to your destination. And so your overall experience is incredibly high because they know that the trip, the, the customer's experience of an airline journey doesn't start when they arrive at the airport and nor end when they get their luggage. It ends when you get to your destination. So by managing the end and the, the beginning and the end, they have a huge impact over the middle. Looking for ways to say, how do I manage it? But it's also making sure that, that I take care of service air. Service air is are the basics. You know, you hadn't probably noticed the air in the room where you are. But if somebody started taking the air out of the room, you'd start noticing it. And I, I'll tell you what, if they took enough air out of the room, you wouldn't notice anything else. And so it's part of what we're talking about is taking care of, of, of the service air, the basics. And you, you pull into the a restaurant parking lot and there's trash all over the parking lot, what do you think? I mean, you don't say, gosh, look at this trashy parking lot, let's go eat. And you're already thinking about what's going on in the kitchen and you, and you know, logically, the people who work in the kitchen don't police the parking lot, but we connect those dots. You know, we connect those dots. I lower a serving tray on an airline's got it, air, coffee stains all over it, I start thinking about engine maintenance. And so again, I've got to take care of those basics because no matter how we create sprinkles and decorate our experience, if the basics aren't there and delivered in a way that to the customer is effortless, all the rest uh, doesn't seem to matter. But I'm going to move to our next one and talk about partnering. Partnering, it is how we build that co-creation experience uh, with our customer. I call it, let your customers lick the beaters. Get them involved. Find a way to include them. And let me give you my favorite example. Back to my vet buddy Matt at Oconee Cellars. Matt decided that he wanted to have his own unique brand of, of bourbon. Now I drink whiskey, Jack Brown whiskey, but he was going to have bourbon. So he had a famous distiller in Kentucky make him his own barrel of whiskey. And they sent him uh, in, in, in five different flavors of what it might be like and ask him to select the one he wanted his signature brand uh, to be. So what do you think Matt did? He let his customers lick the beater, so to speak. He got his customers involved in picking which five they liked the best. You can see down there uh, the little five cups, the five little bottles of, of uh, different blends, a little uh, bo a bottle of water to rinse your mouth with, and whichever one they picked, that's the one he launched as his signature brand. Now, how do you think the customers reacted when he got it? They bought him out. He's already on his third barrel because they were uh, they had skin in the game. They had an opportunity to be a participant in the experience. Betty Crocker is a great example. You know, when uh, her one of the first big products came out in the 50s was Bisquick. Now, it was just simple, simple. You just simply add water. You know, and, 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 and it was a huge success uh, for uh, Betty Crocker. But then she came out with the first cake mix, and it was starting to be a dismal failure. And it was just the same basic principle, you know, just add water, but it was not being successful. And so they began to learn that the homemaker's view of pancakes and biscuits was a little different than cakes. And so someone brilliantly decided, let's take the powdered egg out of the mix and let the homemaker add their own egg. And the product took off and was a huge success. So the lesson from it is, to me, is 
what are the ways I can get my customers to lick the beaters, to get their skin in the game, to get them to be a participant, to get them involved, and more importantly, I need to know sort of how they'd like to be involved, where they'd like to be involved, and again, it comes with knowing our customers. But I want to move to our last component and talk about generosity. Generosity is, is, all, is about always adding a little extra. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's that sense of abundance in the way in which we serve. Jack Daniels demonstrates that through their Operation Ride Home. Um, they have raised an enormous amount of money, all aimed at helping troops get home uh, for the holidays. And again, it's an expression of, of their generosity. Uh, let, let me give you uh, one of my uh, favorite examples of that going that extra mile and that look for generosity. I have a neighbor who uh, had a big shed uh, beside his house, and he wanted to tear it down. Uh, and then he had to figure out what to do with the space where the big old shed used to be. And what he wanted was it to look like what you see, which is what it now looks like. Uh, here in the slide. And so uh, when it came time to pick out, you see lots of plants and ornamental um, shrubs and so forth. When it came time for him to uh, do that, to, to pick out, he took along his granddaughter, Amy. And of course, Amy got involved, and the, the salesperson got Amy to be his helper and he'd ask her opinion and got her involved in, 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 uh, in, in making the decisions and treated her like, like a partner. Uh, and, and, and so then the day came when they delivered all. Amy was at her papa's house when the plants were delivered. And so they unloaded all the plants for the landscaper to put where they needed to be. But then they had one last plant. And so the driver went to the front and brought a rosemary plant that had a big tag that said Amy's plant. And, of course, Amy got to pick where it was planted. And, of course, every time she go visits her grandfather, she rushes out there to see uh, how her plant's doing uh, and, and gets to feel it and smell it. And, and, of course, you can guess what my friend does every time somebody asks him about the nursery where he went uh, or anything even remotely related to horticulture. It's always a great story about Amy and how they got her involved. It's the, an example of how innovative service, how service with sprinkles needs to be unexpected and it needs to be simple, but it also needs to be appropriate. It needs to fit. So again, let's summarize. And, and, and These are the six strategies that we've talked about. There are more in the book, obviously. But the six strategies are all have as their goal to provide sort of a lens uh, through which to think about the experience you create. Again, you know, we've got the, the patterns that our mind tends to follow, it enjoys, it prefers, it's comfortable with. And so these are all ways to say, hmm, what if I did this differently? It, it takes courage, it takes a willingness to, to experiment, and it takes knowing your customers well enough to say, this is what would make something, make a big difference. Today, uh, we have all learned that exceeding the customer's expectation uh, is is important, and organizations everywhere try to exceed the customer's expectations, at least those that stay in business. And they all focus on value added, value added, value added, value added, meaning take what the customer wants or expects and finding a way to add more. The problem with value added is pretty soon you run out of room. I mean, every time you add more, you've elevated the customer's expectations, and so pretty soon it gets too pricey. Uh, so this sprinkles an innovative service is a way to say, what about value unique? Value unique. That we may have a limited number of ways we can be generous, but we have an unlimited ways that we can be ingenious and creative and innovative in what we do. And again, it is those kinds of take their breath away experiences, the ways that that customers remember. It creates the kind of a compelling story they're eager to tell, face-to-face, uh, ear-to-ear, and click-to-click. -click. We all know social media today is, a, is an important part of the landscape of how we serve customers. Um, 
You know, it's five times more uh, powerful than word of mouth because of its reach. Um, and so creating those experiences that customers are eager to talk about uh, can have a big impact on the quality of the experience and therefore an impact on our bottom line and our reputation, uh, whether we're serving customers that are external or down the hall, uh, our colleagues, our employees, and our associates. Let me close with uh, a quote by my friend Herb Kelleher, who is retired as the CEO of Southwest Airlines. The secret to delightful customer experience is to treat every customer like today is their birthday. So go celebrate your customer's birthday. So thank you. I, it's a thrill again for me to do a webinar with, with you, Becky, and uh, we can now take some questions. We absolutely can, and I need to find my camera and turn it back on, um, and I'll do that. So uh, I heard a lot of laughter from everyone. Uh, it would not be a webinar with you, Chip, if we didn't talk about Jack Daniels. <laughs> hey, <absolutely. laughs> so um, I would love to see some questions from everyone, and uh, while we're waiting for those questions to come in, Chip, one of the things I was thinking about is something that you shared with me early on um, related to how a virtual company can add that sprinkle to interaction. Um, and I wondered if you might share that with, with us. It's likely that many people on the call don't ever get face-to-face -face with their customers. Um, I'm glad I've had the privilege of being with you face to face, but most of our interaction is virtual. How do we add that that sprinkles touch to uh, email well, communication? Great, sure, I, I think a, a a good way, a good example of that is is Zappos, um, who gets continually ranked as the top uh, of the uh, top of the, uh, the list in terms of great customer service, and yet most customers, um, their experience with Zappos is all virtual. Um, and I think what they have done is they've taken uh, their cultural value, which is um, create fun and a little weirdness. Now, how cool is that? Create fun and, and a little weirdness. So now you've got a culture where people are looking for uh, ways to, to say, hmm, how can I add that? Um, you know, I, I remember buying something on Zappos and, you know, I got, uh, uh, the, you know, I got a communication back in the, person saw my 214 uh, area code and, and um, on my phone um, and so, sent me a little note saying, it was just real simple. You know, at the end of, of the communication, it was, how about those cowboys? I mean, it's concluded that 214, that's a Dallas phone number, and um, I, you can't be from that area and not be a Cowboys fan. And so I think it's looking for, even when you are virtual, looking for ways to create the experience. Now, I won't go back to Corley again. Um, because I've just recently, through my good friend uh, Susan Oldham, discovered um, Corley in Greenville, South Carolina. But they're just a, a simple trades business that comes out and fixes your water heater, air heat and air conditioning, electrical, plumbing, or whatever. But the when the tech is on the way uh, to your home, they send you an email that uh, shows the picture of the tech as well as the dispatcher and if you click on their picture, you get a little bit of their background. So think about it. That's simple, but there's a way through a digital connection uh, you can enhance that customer's experience, I think, in a fun way. So again, it, it, I think the, it's, the principles are the same. We talk about the channel, digital channel. The channel, you know, I, I think of the channels I know is uh, uh, those related to water. Um, and, and we know we want to take that channel in a hurry, we want it fast, we want it to work, but we also want good scenery along the way. And I think it's the same with uh, the digital channel. We need to find ways to decorate it. That's very helpful. So I have a question coming in from our friend Joseph, who I think is calling in from Texas today. And he said that he works in local government, so he doesn't have anything free to give away. Um, but he tries to teach his customers something they don't know or share information about what's going on in town. And he's wondering what other ideas you might have for him. That simple, you know, it's the simple things like uh, uh, co complimenting a, a, what a great looking outfit or uh, calling them by name or um, shaking their hand with, with two hands. Um, it, it is the things we like to do when it's a neighbor. And, and the perspective I take is you can't give away free, it's a government, of course. But there are a lot of things that we can do that 
uh, create that special experience that um, that don't. Uh, you know, one of the most powerful uh, is is just the way in which you listen to the customer. You know, I. Um, I, I, I image I have is is my granddaughter Cassie, uh, who's six years old and 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 drop dead gorgeous. Her granddad, granddaddy, granddaddy's talk like that, and you know I think about what what a conversation with Cassie is like. You know, it's focused, it's an, an animated, it's energetic. You know, it's um, all about her. And, and you know, I always think you know we when we are talking to an innocent child, we bring the best of who we are, the absolute best of who we are. Why wouldn't it we not bring that same orientation when we're talking to our customer? Listening like you're listening to a, a, a six-year-old um, with energy, enthusiasm, animation, and attention and focus and on their level. So again, there are a lot of things I think we can do uh, without looking for a giveaway. That's very helpful. Uh, so our friend Sally has this question. How do you put sprinkles on a patient's stay in the hospital? You can't add oh. weirdness because it may be a serious illness. I, yes, that's true. I, I worked with a major hospital uh, in Wisconsin that had um, one of the questions on their survey uh, post-surgery uh, was, did you have a good time? And the way they set it up is, in when you think about not the procedure, not the experience, not, but the experience you had when you were in our hospital, did you have a good time? And they are looking for, we want our customers to laugh more than normal. Norm Cousins, who is a, is a great writer, the, wrote The Anatomy of an Illness, talked about the healing effect of, of laughter, of finding ways to provide people with a sense of joy, despite the fact that they're in a complex or in a situation of pain. So I think it's looking for the little extra things. You know, a, a good example is that same hospital I just referenced. Ask patients when they uh, are, are admitted, what's your favorite flower? And and um, and they found that about 90% of their patients mentioned one of four or five common flowers. Not nobody said I really like black orchids. You know, that with simple flowers. And so they worked out a an arrangement with a local florist that uh, when you stayed at their particular hospital, you got a single stem of your favorite flower on your bed stand. You know, that cost them about 50 cents a stem, but it made a huge difference because people went, oh my gosh, look, they they re they remembered I like daisies. I bet they remember a lot of other things that are really important to me and my health. So I think it is looking, thinking out of the box to say, even though we're in a situation where I'm in pain or sick or hurt, I can still create an experience that is pleasant or fun or happy or whatever we choose to be. This particular hospital wanted it to be fun. And so it wasn't unusual to see physicians in costume or crazy things that, that you know, was colorful and delightful to be. That was their distinction. It doesn't have to be fun, but I think it needs to be fi find ways to make it um, in engaging with the customers. I love that, Chip. Thanks. Uh, so Nancy is wondering, Chip, how would you put sprinkles on a business-to-business -business customer experience? I think the business-to-business -business is the particularly a good uh, opportunity. Uh, and, and here's the way to think about it. I, I work with a lot of B2B companies, and they always like to say, well, you know, we're B2B, we're different. <laughs> and I say, I tell you what, why don't you have a meeting and, uh, and invite those businesses to your meeting, and I bet you $50 people are going to show up instead. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, it's P2P. And, and I, I, know, I know there are differences between B2C and B2, B2B, but I think the fact that today we have um, uh, more and more customers are caring about, in a B2B environment, they're caring about the experience, not just the price. In fact, recent research showed that price was like fifth in terms of the criteria of choice uh, when, when uh, selecting a, a B2B company to work with. And so more and more, it's things like trust and reliability and, and, uh, and, and the quality of what you provide. All of those things are now, because at the end of the day, you know, very few customers buy on price, they buy on value. And part of the definition of value is the experience you create. And since many, many B2B companies don't think that way, having a company that says, we're going to make the experience different. Um, it's not that price is unimportant. It's not that the quality of the product or all of this. But we're going to make the experience different would be a differentiator. It would create a unique opportunity, uh, particularly in the B2B world. That's very helpful. So Kirk, who I know is calling in from Cleveland, Ohio, not so far from me, is wondering, Chip, if you have any insights on the wireless phone industry and the purchase experience, I'm guessing, of phones. Well, um, 
Uh, yes, I have. I have some. I think here again, the two things that, that come to mind because I've done a lot of work in that industry, particularly with Verizon Wireless. Um, but I think the the model to follow is um, to not think of the relationship, not think of it as a transaction, but think of it as a relationship. Um, I don't want you to sell you this phone. I want to sell you the. I want to sell you the phone ten phones later. Um, I want to be your uh, advisor, your um, helper. And so I think in that particular world, those organizations that are in the wireless world that are doing extremely well are those that are saying, we want to build a partnership with our customers, so look, look at all the elements and characteristics of a great partnership. You know, you come into the store, I know your name, I know your background, I know your history. Um, the, uh, I, I follow up afterward. The sale is just the beginning of the relationship. Um, it's not the end. It's not like you won. You made the sale. It's like now it starts, and the customer's going to watch to see whether you um, manage that relationship in a way that wants to make them come back again. Uh, I think it is paying more and more attention to uh, the, the tailored solution that you provide and not just the equipment. Um, so I think there is the differentiation, particularly in the wireless world, is going to come uh, less and less through the, through the um, product and more and more through the relationship that you create uh, and one that the customer sees you as their telecommunications advisor and not just a, um, a retail store that you go buy stuff from that I can also get online. Boy, that's interesting. I, I've never had any kind of experience like that in buying a cell phone. So um, I imagine if someone could get that right, it would definitely uh, make that company stand out. Absolutely. Rico at Procom, Verizon Wireless, where I buy my phone, taught me a lot about that. You know, and I still get follow-up. You know, I, my contract's not over for another year and a half. Uh, he's not going to wait till a year and a half to be, get back in touch with me. He sends me stuff, sends me little uh, articles he's seen. You know, I'm on his hot list, you know, to, to get stuff that says, here's ways you can save money. Did you know X? You know, a lot of little uh, frequently asked questions, information. Um, and, and, you know, I step in there. There's, I, I can't tell you how many times I've walked in and, and um, I've, I've walked out with something. He just, uh, let, let me give you my favorite. Let me just give you my favorite Rico story. Um, we moved to a house, and it didn't have very good cell service. And, uh, cell service. and at the time, I had AT&T. This is why I changed to Verizon and changed to them. And so I went in the store, and I said, I got AT&T, and I'm not very good. Very good, good it's a new house. I'm not getting very many bars. And, um, and so Rico said, um, well, I, I think Verizon might be better, but I don't know where you live, uh, whether it is or not. So here, why don't you take this phone, go take it home and test it. So he handed me a phone without getting my name, information, or background. He just handed me a phone and told me to take it home, walk out in my front yard and test it to see the kind of, solution, the, the kind of um, reception I got. Well, as it turned out, I didn't get any better reception with Verizon, but it told me I need to put a tower in my in my office so I do get great reception. But I also, as soon as the AT&T contract was over, I switched to Rico at Verizon. He trusted me and demonstrated that um, the relationship again was more than the, more important than just that transaction. That is a tremendous. Uh, I wish that more of us could have that experience. I have, to, I have to say, Chip, having been with you in situations where we've been served as a customer, I think there's something about how we can be better customers to elicit th that type of service. I, I don't know. I, I do. I think, it, I think it helps if you help the server give you great service. And, and uh, when I go, as you've seen me do in restaurants or whatever, you know, I, I think you, you can set it up um, and just uh, we, 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 we need your help. We want your best server. And so when the person comes over and they, get, they say, oh, well, that'd be Jamie. And so Jamie comes over and you say, Jamie, you know what? We asked for you because they told us you're the best server in the house. And I bet you're going to get good service then. I've watched you do that, Chip. <laughs> of course you are. If only you could figure out how to get coffee at 6 a.m. when nobody's serving coffee. <laughs> right, that's right. All right. Well, you know what? This has been a tremendous hour. So much fun. Um, before we end the webinar, I want to remind everybody that Chip's brand new book is launching today. It's Sprinkles. We've had a little bit of an issue with Amazon.com in stock. So if you want to buy a book and get it immediately, we recommend that you visit BarnesandNoble.com or 
800 CEO rate, especially if you're looking for bulk purchases. Amazon's going to get you the book eventually, but right now it's showing two to three weeks, and that's not a good customer experience. We want to make sure that if you want the book today, you know how to get it. Um, Chip, is there anything else you want to say to this crowd? What's next for you? And uh, as we're talking about bookstores, which one's your favorite? I think uh, in great customer service, I think books a million. I, I mentioned them earlier. Um, they always, I've been in lots of their stores. I've always getting great, uh, great service. Um, for bulk, you know, I usually recommend 800 CEO Read that you just recommended because uh, they're all about business books and uh, they do a great job, particularly if you're buying several hundred copies. All right. Well, so thanks. Thanks to all of you who have spent your lunch hour with us or your morning coffee hour with us or uh, got up in the middle of the night to be with us around the world. Uh, it's a pleasure, as always, Chip. And we will be sending out some follow-up. We hope you'll share sprinkles with your friends and colleagues. And uh, we look forward to the next opportunity to learn with you. Thanks, Chip. Thank you, Becky. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.